Here we are, Dana Point Harbor. If you look out there, you're going to see uh, the entrance to the channel. We're going to take about an hour and 15 hour and 20 minute boat ride. Looks like the seas are looking really calm today. <laughs> Mr. Anthony's going to get his first real life glimpse at uh, Catalina Island. And uh, we'll probably get out there around 1030, get all situated. We're here at the dock right now. We got Patrick, never met him. Jimmy Reed, my good buddy, hunting buddy. Nick, good buddy. Anthony from New York. And uh, myself, we're all sitting here ready to get on the boat. Catalina Express out of Dana Point Harbor, man. Live. Big dog status, now I'm a big dog vet. I pull up on the block in a big Corvette. Yeah. Riding around the city with a stick all black. Yeah. Try it with a stoke of weed with all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Um, not a very big uh, city, is it? Very small island, but very hilly. Mostly golf carts. Yes. We're out here. We got uh, Nick, the buddy Nick, fellow hunting buddy Nick, Jimmy. He's over there trying to figure out how to cut bolts and locks and what kind of stuff happened. What's going on? It was locked going open. Wait, what? You brought him again? Yeah. And uh, we're getting ready to go on an afternoon hunt. We're going to go drop some coolers off. We're going to go see if we can put something on the ground this afternoon, huh? Absolutely, I'm in. All right, yeah. guys. Put some horns on the ground. Put some horns on the ground. All, All right, New York, man. We got New York. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. I don't mean to be rude. Yeah. Just a little different from all these dudes Okay, 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 they riding waves Me, I'm up on the cruise, yeah, yeah You feel like me, then you got nothing to prove uh, uh, I see him trying, trying to do what I do, yeah, yeah Even my dagger couldn't move like a moon, yeah, yeah You think you're how when you come up on the moon, yeah Got fresh to death and it came out of the tomb That's cause I, I, I got a different type of gratitude Don't be sour, got my power from the Beatitudes And we did it the long way, check out the latitude I'm unapologetic well, we've been at it for what, maybe 30 minutes, right? What do you think, Ben? If you take a look, pretty much just driving along, it's, uh, this is Salta Verde Ridge. It's kind of a ridge on the uh, eastern part of the island. If you look out there, that's the west end, what they call the west end. And the furthest point is uh, the furthest point of the western end of the Catalina Island, and there's a cut in there. And then, uh, so we just came up from, that was Bull Gulch we came up? Bull Rush came up on the top of the ridge here and we just spotted a uh, two by three. It was about 400 yards. And uh, the big boss, Ben, says we need to hold off for a little bit. There might be better things in the I future. <laughs> Just so everybody kind of knows where we're at, this is kind of day one for us, I guess, morning hunt. Um, if you look out that way, that's the windward side of Catalina. Out that way would be the leeward where Avalon's at, LA, and uh, it's a pretty special moment out here. Not many people get to do this. And we're out here with uh, my good buddy Ben with Wildlife West, uh, Inc., and Anthony D'Agostino, my hunting partner from around the world from uh, the good old Long Island, New York, man. So. What do we got, Ben? So we're standing on, this is called Silver Canyon here, which is obviously big. <laughs> and it dumps into what's called Grand Canyon. They come together down here and dump out in the ocean. Palisades is on the back. 
Yeah, it's rugged. This is rough in here. You you gotta be careful. It's a whole different world, <laughs> man. There's not a house around. Um, been looking in the morning, glassing, saw a couple of deer, saw some doe, um, saw a buck or two. Saw one first thing in the morning, but he was on the other side of the fence. We weren't allowed to hunt on. Yeah. He looked good, so uh, we'll just continue the hunt. I guess it's about 9.30 in the morning. They're all bedded down. It's getting hot. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah so the we'll probably... The one we just saw was probably bedded and heard us and stood up and... Kind of took off. You know, we just didn't have a good shot on him. He's yeah. a good buck, but just... We got the best lunch. guy in, in the West with us, so... Big, big bad Ben. Big bad Ben. Yeah, man, triple B. Yeah, put the pressure on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, we'll do something to screw it up. And yeah, you can I know, sure. <laughs> You'll find us one and then we'll f it up, so that's okay. <laughs> So he's still standing there, he's at 8.07. Okay. So I don't know if... So should I go up there? Whatever curve works for you the best. I was just trying to give you a shade. Head cocked towards us? Yep. Okay, you got the right white rocks are at the 5 o'clock. Where's my wind coming from? The wind's coming left to right. It's going to okay. be coming down. He's now turned his head. Okay. Looking, looking down towards the up now, he's back. I got a three on here for five. What do you okay, want me to that do? That three's putting you where? Mid body, roughly? You're going to start following that toe anytime. So I'm, the spotter's ready. You're holding for a three mile an hour wind. So I'll hold two. You got about 10 seconds, so. All right, ready? Yep. Send it. That is feet left. Okay, huh? I'm good with the elevation, but you were a good three, three what was it? feet now. left. He's to the right. Okay, barely. same distance, no wind hold. Same frame. Low and behind him. See him, he's on the other side of the bush. The f You're low. Hold on, Anthony. All right. You got to go up. He's at two o'clock to the rocks. He's got his butt to us, right, Ben? This shit's off. The f That's five f***ing bullets. That got him. We have a very high risk recovery situation right here. We got our guide, Ben, is basically, I would say he's probably not far from just basically being vertical down this eroded chute, loose scree and uh, the animal made it about a third of the way down and we still got a long ways to go. So I think this is kind of one of those recoveries where you have a plan, but all that gets thrown out and it's kind of just taking it, you know, 25 yards at a time to figure out where to get it to the next spot. Once he can get some place where he can stabilize it, he can quarter it up, we can get it in the pack and then we can get it out. But the problem is if you look where it's at, it's just, uh, I mean, I don't know how you dial up a worse spot. This is just some nasty stuff. We got all kinds of cactus. We got loose soil. On a scale of one to 10, this is gonna hit the 10 plus scale for recovery, so. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Holy shit. Well, 
Well, I didn't really start shooting a rifle until I retired. My dad never went deer hunting. He never did any rifle hunting or anything. I can only remember one time we went back up in the hills behind Santa Barbara, but that was with somebody else. And uh, Jimmy actually was the guy that got me started on it. He took me to the range one time. And then uh, from there, I mean, he took me out. Created on a monster. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm thankful machine. for it. It's been a great deal. Yeah. Um, but never, <clears throat> never ever hunted an elk before. I was 55, I think, when I heard my first elk. Huh? Yeah. So it's been really cool. The interesting part is just learning how to do it without all the old school behind it, you know? Because I've been around a lot of people and just see the how things have progressed from like I hunted with uh, I hunt with my uncle Mike, who's my dad's third youngest brother. He's 75 now. And just I went hunting with him recently and how difficult it was to hunt with somebody that, you know, the old school? The old school, right? Because I'm like, okay, give me some yardage and all the stuff that goes on. And he's like, just put lead in it. You know what I'm saying? But the good but the good part was, you know, by the time we finished hunting together, I mean, he had learned a lot about, you know, just how it works now and all yeah. the different things, you know. But yeah. it's, it was different to see that comparison. And uh, so that's kind of my story with the rifle piece. I was actually at a uh, Peter rally trying to support non-hunting. And him and I got no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I shot paper and um, always, and I heard great things about Gunworks. So I decided to take a Gunworks class, check it out, because I was going to buy a rifle. I call up and say, hey, I'm interested in a rifle. I'll come for a class. You're going to buy a rifle. We'll give you a free class. So I said, all right, screw it. You know, I'll come and I'll come to class. Well, I ended up meeting Randy. And that's how I ended up shooting with him and meeting him. Oh, at that class. At that class. So, you know, and I bought this like Ruger Precision, like $1,000 <laughs> like rifle, because that was my first one. But I wanted to get a better rifle. So we were out there shooting in the back of Monster Lake Ranch yeah. in Wyoming, hitting like 1,400 yards and having a ball. That's all we did all day. Yeah, we, we, we would go to class, come back, and long range all day. Um, I ended up buying a rifle from Gunworks. And he called me up and he's like, hey, man, he's like, uh, I'm going to Africa. You want to hunt? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll hunt. What the hell? He's like, yeah, all right, cool. I'll, I'll call you. I was like, okay, great. Honey, can I go? Yeah. I was like, babe. She's like, go to Africa. I was like, all right. So now I had just started to semi-retire. My business was kind of kind of want to get out. And I met Randy and I was telling him how I wanted to do more things. And that's why he called me. And it was great. And we went to Africa. And we're in this truck and we're getting our stuff together. Remember, Greg's like, so, all right, all right, Anthony, when was the last time you hunted? And I'm like, you mean with, like, including this trip? He's like, yeah. I was like, never. He was like, slammed on the brakes. He's like, you never hunted before and you're in Africa? <laughs> yeah, that was my first hunting experience. Jump in the fire. Jump in the fire, man. Yeah. So, kind of spoiled him, unfortunately. That was yes. a big mistake on my part because you could go out in the plains area. Oh, man. And we could hunt like wildebeest and impalas and stuff. So you, yeah. you, you get out there and you get to <laughs> your glass and there's like 60 animals. <laughs> it's not like we got to look right. Right. for an animal. So, but I was, I'm good with a rifle and I'm good with like, good. like, you know, kind of spotting and following. So it all kind of worked out. Yeah. It did. But that's. The, the thing was, about there is it's a little bit more wide open. It's not yeah. near as rugged. So oh, if right. you do have an issue that occurs, you have the ability to track, track. it and get it. You know, it's not the, you don't, it's not the end of the world. Like here, this requires you to really think the shot that's through. The end of the world down there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know that, yeah, right? We've been to the end of the world. So it's yeah. a good, it's a good experience because it's yeah. a totally different experience, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, I just started this maybe what? Two years ago? Yeah, it's been a year and a half. About a year and a half. I but mean, you're a good shooter, though. I mean, hey, you're, I mean you know, he's a good rifle shooter, good pistol shooter. So I mean, yeah, I the hunting stuff, that's just yeah. time in the field to yeah. learn it. To and learn it. And getting the equipment right and getting, you know. Class and yeah. 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 You go about getting them, so yeah. My anxiety when I hunt is more like I want to get that ethical shot. Yeah. Like, I don't want to take that shot unless I know I'm, I'm going to hit. Because I don't, I don't, you know, that's the hardest part for me because... And also having an animal in your crosshair is a whole lot different than having a bull. Oh yeah. So like when you look at a piece of paper, like we, we go to the range sometimes and it's like, oh, target 1400 yards steel. You're like, you know, sh sh you know take your time. Yeah. There's no, there's no pressure. And it's like, bing, I can hit that. Get behind an animal. You're like, fucking holy shit. And that comes, blood through it. yeah, you get, you get that excitement. You get that like adrenaline going. I'm sure for someone like, I don't know about you, you probably don't have that anymore, but this is my first second this is my second time hunting yeah first time ever shooting a deer so it's like yeah. that adrenaline's pretty hot yeah and that's why you do it too you got to have something in you for it yeah 
it's exciting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I even see the guides. They still get the good guides. They're still excited. They're excited for you, you know. Yeah, so their 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 level of excitement. What I see in great guides like Ben and and the guys we hunt with are, you know, their excitement level is way high too. If you notice that they get you know, antsy about because they know that your window of opportunity yeah. is about this big, you know, and like they don't want you to not feel a sense of urgency, but it's like a fine line. You don't want to keep them. Because if you go jacked up high, yeah. they your heart goes jacked up high and it, it discombobulates people. So you got to be, hey, there's a deer over there. Let's take a good shot and take your time. You can't be going, hurry, you got to get him. Then it just, it you, people come apart and you learn that as a guy. That's just experience. You just kind of drop it down a level. I've seen Ben excited for us last night when I was handing him the the, the sticks to come up the ridge, hold up the ridge. He wasn't very excited. <laughs> the excitement had been lost. <laughs> As we're clawing up this like 90 degree hill. Yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. <laughs> and we get all walks of life, everybody out there. There's just from experience to inexperience to people fresh from the city with brand new tags on tags on their clothes to the old timers. I had a guy two hunts ago. He's been hunting here longer than me. He started in 81 coming out here. Wow. Wow. And uh, and now he's almost 80, but he still gets around, but he still probably dresses in as exact same as he yeah, was back then right. because yeah. He, yeah. he's just pretty simple. Yeah. Got the gun, got the binoculars, blue jeans and an orange shirt and <laughs> off he goes. Yeah. And he gets it done, yeah. you know. So you just, you just don't know them. And kids and women are first timers. They really listen to you as a guide going. Which is good. It is good because they're right with you and yeah. they're listening to everything you say. And they usually do pretty well. Yeah. You know, you can they, listen. Yeah. they listen. Yeah. You get some veteran guys and they're like, eh, I don't even listen to this guy. They, especially when you first start out guiding, they're like, how many years you got going? Oh, you kind of always fudge those numbers. So you get, cause if your guy loses it's confidence in you, yeah. um, it, it's, a tougher game to get out, you know, to play out. So, how'd you get started? You're, oh, I grew up you're a totally different so story, like huh? This big, yeah. You know, just around guns and hunting, and they'd give me a a 410 with a slug in it and sit me in a tree when they're out deer hunting, going through the woods. They go here, just sit here and wait. One will come by, and you're like eight, and you're like, <laughs> when are they coming back? Like, so then I think first time I ever not guided somebody I was thinking I was 15 really? in New Mexico yeah and then it's just I never really considered it being a to be a career I kind of grew up around it in the guiding and on a ranch in New Mexico and then uh, I actually went to school to a tech school I wasn't going to computers and engineering that sort of thing and then I go I don't want to live in the city the rest of my life I'm out and then I got a call for to come to Northern California to go on this ranch to go guiding and that was it, and then I worked my way through school. And, wow, um, that's crazy. That's that was I was from Minnesota to California. What year was that? I came here in '89, so I was 21. Yeah, good for you, bro. And I've been, been, been doing family. it ever since. So I'm 52 now. So you left the family. What's that? When you left at 21, you left some mom and dad were out there. Yeah, right? well, I, um, we'd actually moved out to Oregon by then, and so I just see you later. I had a motorcycle and hit the road, took off. For you, man. Yeah. All That's right. Guys, ready to go hunt? Yeah, hey, let's go. Let's, let's go, go hunt. Knock it out. I see the sand patch. And then just go to the very corner of the sand patch where there's some bright green cactus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him now, I think. See the bright green cactus? Yeah. It's just a little patch by itself, and he's right between. He's between two cactus patches. Man, f man. go for it. I got two. He's a three by. He's not a monster, but he's a shot. It'd be fun. It'd be pretty fing badass if you hit him. 702. I think we give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> All good here. Whenever you're ready. Make sure you got one in the chamber, safety's off. Nice, steady, easy pull. Shooter ready. 
Send it. Hello. He moved. Oh, you better. You sent it like right between his antlers. I saw the vapor trail go right over the back of his head. Hit the hell, so I was what, five inches high? If that. I think it took a little while to get set up, but I felt really good with the shot. I think I was maybe four inches. We were looking the front of his chest. He was like pretty much looking. I think we dropped it right down between his antlers, man. But there was no wind call. Uh, ben saw the vapor trail go in, so we were good left and right. So, you know, just about that much off from where it needed to be. So we'll find another one. Got to. My barrel, we got a right to left. Right We're to left. two minutes on him. Copy? Copy. All right, you guys got to let me know because I'm ready. I'm good. It was a little hazy, you know what I mean? Just kind of. Did you feel good about the shot? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So we'll go down to the market. I mean, my setup, I knew. Oh, well, first of all, Ben's the best. Bailed us out twice in the last two days. Guy's the best guy in all the United States. Praise the Lord for helping us find this guy tonight, man. Was, uh, you know, sometimes it's a little bit rough. This wasn't a picture perfect one, but Ben got down here and got him and we took care of the job today. And uh, thanks to Anthony and uh, Grady for catching this and Daynette, thank you for letting me come out and do all this crazy stuff. I'm not sure why I do it sometimes, but um, you know, it really is all about the friendship and the camaraderie when you get put up against the wall like this and you know, you got people surrounding you to help you make it happen. I'm just so blessed and so thankful and uh, you know, God is good. So what can I say, man? Thank you.
Sam will be back in time. Let's get down there. He's not gonna go up. Guys can't be dead enough, they're tougher than you think. Freaking will to live is unbelievable. He's dead. So yeah. awesome. <laughs> Feel the wind die? Yeah, I felt it like I was holding, I'm like, oh fuck, I'm gonna miss her. So I just changed it to hold one minute. Did it get her in shoulder or yeah, she she was holding that that leg up her her back her backside leg. Like, cool. Good eye. Good eye, Mike. Mm.